Hello, this is Sharon Hill, creator of SpookyGeology.com. Spooky Geology content focuses on the popular beliefs or legends about natural geological features or events attributed to paranormal or supernatural causes or related to general strangeness that is associated with geology. In this video, we visit Devil's Tower, an iconic location of the American West, and examine the natural history and the cultural interpretations of this impressive geologic feature. Devil's Tower in Northeast Wyoming had historically served as a beacon to the Plains travelers, but in 1977 it was portrayed as the target landing site for extraterrestrial travelers in the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind. It wasn't just another landmark, it expressed a sense of something mysteriously powerful used by the gods beyond human understanding. Those narratives have always been part of the history and prehistory of Devil's Tower. This is typical with striking geologic features around the world. They almost always have associations with gods or mythical beings, as this was a human way of explaining their origin. Many stories have endured to present day. Devil's Tower looking like a gigantic lithified tree stump, jutting 867 feet from the surface, is clearly iconic and unusual. It's a volcanically derived feature that protrudes from the landscape in such a spectacular way that it induces awe, reverence, and fascination for those who come upon it. It's truly a landmark of spooky geology. According to the National Park Service, the name Devil's Tower, now officially spelled without the apostrophe, originated from an 1875 scientific expedition when Colonel Richard Dodge wrote that the Indians called the feature Bad God's Tower, that he translated to Devil's Tower. However, the naming of Devil's Tower is quite possibly a translation error of a native term for bear. There were no other records that indicated the natives thought of this as a place of bad spirits, but they certainly related it to bears. Hundreds of other striking locations around the U.S. and the world have a devil name, which was often given because the place had some eerie characteristics, or it was a spiritual place of the indigenous peoples that the white settlers literally demonized, assuming that other gods besides their own must be of the devil. Find more information on places with devil names at SpookyGeology.com. Early maps labeled the feature as Bear Lodge, which is a direct translation of the Lakota name Matu Tipi. There's an ongoing effort to change the name back to Bear Lodge. Other native names include Bear's Teepee, Home of the Bear, Tree Rock, and Great Gray Horn. The structure does resemble those various descriptions, and bears frequented this location in past centuries. The origin story of Devil's Tower is unsurprisingly described via incredible legends by several Native American tribes. The native legends include the well-known story of a giant bear chasing young girls. By the power of the Great Spirit, the mountain rose up and the bear's attempts to scale the mountain resulted in the cloth scratch marks along the perimeter and the pieces of rock that fell off and collected at the base, called talus. One of the most popular versions goes like this. Seven little girls who were playing some distance from their village were pursued by bears. Realizing that they could not reach the safety of the village in time, they jumped onto a low rock and prayed to the rock to save them. Immediately, the rock began to shoot upward, and when its top reached the sky, the children were turned into the seven stars which we know as the Pleiades. The National Park Service closes the monument to climbers in June out of respect for the native ceremonies that take place then and asks people to refrain from walking inside of the designated loop trail. Even though we can now scientifically explain the structure of the tower, the legend remains as a poetic reminder that people are intimately connected to nature. Other than its solitary hugeness, the most obvious feature of the towers is that it appears to be made of narrow hexagonal columns. The formation is a result of its geological origin and normal physics. The rock that makes up the tower was an igneous intrusion that was emplaced about 50 million years ago, liquid rock that cooled under the surface. The surrounding and overlying rock then eroded away 5 to 10 million years ago. This blob of hard rock jutting out from the surrounding plain 
is less prone to erosion and breakdown. The type of rock is called phonolite porphyry. Phonolite rocks ring when struck due to the internal crystal structure, hence the name. The latest idea on the geological formation of Devil's Tower is that it is a Mar diatreme eruption lava dome, a hypothesis based on the alignment of magnetic minerals in the rock samples studied. The columnar jointing of a magmatic intrusion is the result of the liquid rock cooling slowly and forming tension cracks similar to the formation of mud cracks. Though it looks manufactured, it's natural and is relatively common. The same physical processes formed the steps of the Giant's Causeway in Ireland, the angular Devil's Post Pile in California, and the magnificent Fingal's Cave in Scotland, all of which have their spooky legends. There is a legend that a hoard of gold is hidden in a cave somewhere in the tower with a secret entrance. This has never been found, even though the site has been well explored, because it doesn't exist. The rock body is not hollow, but solid. Devil's Tower was named the very first U.S. National Monument, an honor bestowed in 1906. In Close Encounters of the Third Kind, the tower becomes a key character in the movie itself. Its imagery was featured heavily not only in the storyline, but in the movie promotion. Joe Alvis, production designer and location scout for the Steven Spielberg film, noted that the incorporation of this location heightened the creative and spiritual sense of the film. The fall of 2017 marked the 40th anniversary of Close Encounters movie release. The Devil's Tower UFO Rendezvous was held at Hewlett, Wyoming at this time, where the attendees celebrated all things UFO, including the movie that helped bring attention and public acceptance to the idea of alien visitation. Because of the popularity of the movie, millions of people know Devil's Tower. But it had always been a special location endowed with mystical connotations. Strange lights and other phenomena have been reported in the vicinity of Devil's Tower. Native spirits are said to live at the tower. Indigenous legends tell of the special power of the rock and as a spot where gods or great monsters visit. While the tower is not a historic hotspot of UFO activity, as the remote deserts of the western U.S. are, there have been a handful of reports. It's a popular assumption that a magnificent natural site has some aura or energy that draws out-of-this-world entities. The few reports of UFOs near the tower are not very dramatic and are weak evidence of alien craft, but there is this continued need to portray the site in association with UFOs. This place looks so amazing it seems obvious it should draw visitors, or gods, from outer space as well as from Earth. Thus, any anomaly or event reported here may be interpreted in that frame. This natural, impressive, and awe-inspiring feature engenders in visitors a sense that this land holds a value beyond just scientific understanding. It's spooky, for sure, but it's a national treasure of the United States no matter what you believe about its origin. The spooky reputation of Devil's Tower may grow in the coming decade as tales, credible or incredible, propagate on the internet, and people come to seek out their own special experiences. I like to hope that the emotional or spiritual draw of a site is an opportunity to teach about how nature works and to appreciate the scientific work that goes into understanding how such features were formed and why they should remain for us to enjoy. <laughs>